this is Kenai. I'm going to give him his bath. He hasn't had one since he was in the hospital. And I just kind of have it tepid. Not cold at this time of year. It's too cold for me. And definitely not hot. And although he loves his bath, he doesn't necessarily like getting in the tub. We've had this tub for about 20 years. We have a 150-year-old Victorian home. And so we put it in a long time ago for the dog. It's waist high. So I can not break my back. And you just want to try to get him as wet as you can. Now, all this being said, I am by no means a professional groomer. So, not a professional groomer. I just had news for about 20, 29 years. And over the years, I've acquired all of the stuff to, uh, to bathe my dog. He yeah, really does like his bath, but this is the first time that I've bathed him since he was in the hospital. He has a heart problem. He was diagnosed with global dilated cardiomyopathy. And I just, I usually bathe him once a week because of his allergies. But I just not wanted to, I was just a little apprehensive about trying it. it just, so I made sure my husband was home. There's a problem, which I don't anticipate there being one. But. I try and get him as wet everywhere as I can. But as you know, with the news, it can take a while. And typically I do one side, and then I have a turn. Kenai's been having a little bit of trouble turning. I think he's getting a little bit of arthritis. So. And unlike us, dogs don't necessarily like to have warm or hot baths. So you can overheat your dog if you do it too warm. So it's just barely kind of tepid. Now 
I bathe them, I, I shampoo them twice. He gets a medicated shampoo. So I wash him the first time with just regular shampoo to make sure his skin is all clean and all of that. And then I rinse him and I put on the medicated because you want medicated shampoo to reach the clean skin. Like I said, I'm not a professional groomer. I'm just little. So I'm not going to have you watch me um, rinse all of him, but I did want to say that it is imperative, absolutely one of the most important things is to get all of the soap out. So when I rinse, I rinse and then I rinse again until I make sure that the water is clear when it's coming off, there's no soapy residue. You have to be really, really good about that, otherwise you can cause some other skin problems. And you definitely don't want to do that. Um, Another thing, you know, it used to be a lot of people would use, and I've used it, an oatmeal-based shampoo. If your dog has, you know, depending on what it is, the oatmeal actually can contribute to the problem. So, you know, it's better to either get just a really good shampoo that, you know, somebody you, you trust, a groomer, your vet maybe, although they don't always know, but, and use that and see if that doesn't help calm the skin down. And sometimes you do have to bathe them. Um, like, there's been weeks where I've bathed him two or three times a week if his skin is really, really bad. And once you tend to get it under control, of all the medicines we've tried, of all that stuff, the thing that's helped the most is when I've been able to bathe him. And that being said, in 28 years of noops, I have never trimmed down one of my dogs. And I have actually taken him to a groomer I trust. She's in my obedience club. A friend of mine takes her, her noops there. And I've had her trim him down into more of a summer clip, so he's a couple of inches long. But it's so much easier on him and me when I have to be bathing him that often. And, you know, it just doesn't take as long. And it works really well. So he's about ready to start the medicated portion. So here's Kenai. And he is... I'm going to sit here for 10 minutes with this medicated shampoo on and then I'll put his conditioner on and then we'll be on the grooming table. So um, I'm going to try and get you guys some good photos of that. You just have to remember that if you're following the directions of a medicated shampoo, you want to make sure you follow those directions because um, you know that can make the difference between it working and it not working. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so Keen and I got to cook for a little bit. You can see he's sitting. I don't know if you can see or not, but I'm going to start rinsing him. I'd have him stand up, but I don't want him standing any longer than he has to because of his heart. And he's still kind of getting back in shape. So again, rinsing until the water's clear. There's no sign of soap.
And I think that's it. So until we get in ready to get out of the tub, I think I'll turn off the camera and take care of this. how long we can do this standing up with I'm going to blow dry and you're not going to really be able to hear me. So here goes. shampoo him and I use a good conditioner and stuff on him. This just makes a big difference. something you want to use on their face. And I buy the concentrate. to watch the whole thing we'll be back so I gotta keen I lay down because he worries me a little bit with standing up like that but um so he's mostly dry there may still be some places but I wanted him to rest so what I normally do after I bathed him because keen ice coat gets a little knotted and I didn't get the ice nice put on right away is I take my Greyhound comb and I start combing and when I run into a little bit of a knot then I kind of gently work it out and you know it doesn't take too long but I make sure I'm not pulling on anything although Kenai puts up with a whole lot and you know eventually I'm able to comb all the way through everything. Now, he doesn't like having his head blown, so right now we're kind of negotiating in that part. And as you can see, I didn't have my grooming arm on because I really didn't think I needed it with Kenai. Kenai is not a jumper and he will not jump off the table. He also pretty much does everything I ask him, so he would have stayed standing until he passed out, and I did not want him to do that. You might also hear the whiner, and that would be Castle. So I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit because it doesn't look like. So I tend to just start in one area, and I a lot of times I'll either start at the front or the back. There's no real, you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. 
Remember, it's your dog. And you want to have fun with this. This is actually kind of therapeutic for me. And Castle's upstairs whining because he knows, you know, this is one of his favorite things in the world is to get in the bathtub, get on the grooming table, and usually means he's going to get ready to go someplace. Kenai is still not doing therapy dog work yet, but he hasn't had a bath in a few weeks, so I really wanted to get him bathed. Um, you can see at the back of the table, I have some steps that I use for Kenai because unlike Castle, Kenai will not jump up on anything. So that's okay. I have these steps that were made for something else. And so we've repurposed them and they're the perfect height for my grooming table. And they're the perfect height to get Kenai on and off. So when he gets on, they're at one end. And then I just move them around to the other end for him to get off. So there's a lot of different steps that you can make. Or I know there's some of the foam insulation steps, directions somewhere online. But that's kind of how I do that. And I usually try the dog to usually stand up because otherwise my back starts to hurt. So that could be a problem here in a minute. So I'm going to sit here and work on Kenai. Normally, if I'm just combing him, he likes to lay on the floor and just have me comb him. So it's not a lot different, but convincing him to lay down on this table, which he's never done, was not quite so easy. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was, you know, when you go to bathe your dog, the very best thing you can do is you can have them all combed out first. If you don't have them all combed out, if you don't have them all combed out, you're liable to end up with a really matted dog. So my dogs are combed pretty frequently, but if there's been a little bit of time that they haven't been combed, then I try and make sure that I spend that extra time and I put them on the grooming table and get them combed out so there's no knots, there's no um, mats those just get worse um, it's just one of those things that for yourself and for your dog one of the kindest things you can do is just spend some time combing your dog out before you bathe them so a couple of other things I was thinking about when you are blow drying your dog after you've bathed them you spend all that time with them and you've bathed them and massaged them and then you get them out you're gonna blow dry them that's a really good time to check their skin. So since Kenai, nope, stay. Since Kenai has allergies, I always take that opportunity to check his skin and see if he's got any little scabby areas that I need to take care of because I have found that what the doctor would call debride them, taking a fine tooth comb and getting that scabbiness away from his skin helps to keep any kind of hot spot from forming. So he's not had a hot spot and I don't know if he's ever had a hot spot. So I keep him very combed out. I usually lay down with him. Not always lay down. I sit down with him at some point during our day and spend a little bit of time just combing somewhere. Now, he has his favorite side. He doesn't always want to flip over to the other side. So sometimes I have to wait until he's more in the mood to do the other side, so. But for him, this is what we're doing right now. Normally, when you see me do castle, I have him standing. And standing allows me to do this a little easier, a little more efficiently. And with Castle, I will probably have my grooming arm on because he's such a funny boy. As much as he likes being on here, there are certain areas he does not like enjoy. So when I start to groom his back end, his little boy areas, 
that's not one of his favorite places for me to spend time. So, and he's not nearly as good about the combing out, and if there's the tiniest little knot, he gets a little bit upset. So, I tried very hard, but as you can see, I'm just using my Greyhound comb. Um, before, when I've done Castle and gotten him ready, and even with Kenai when we get ready, if they're not just having a bath, a lot of times I will use my rake. But my preference is really just my comb. Um, until I start to, to do some trimming, and then I use a couple of other things, but um, I'm gonna see if I can't blend in a few of these areas on Kenai's legs where he had to have some IVs put in and the leads for the EKGs and stuff. And they had to shave part of him on his belly sides to be able to do his ultrasounds. That was hard. Um, his Doppler, I'm not sure. But at any rate, that water you hear running is because we do have a 150 year old house and it's raining outside. And although we have a relatively dry basement most of the time, if it rains or whatever, our basement seeps. So nothing usually stands, but our drain is right over here by the end of my tub. And right now, since it's raining, the water's coming in and you can kind of hear it running. And then that was just the furnace that kicked on. So I just do this down in my basement. And it does, I have also my laundry down here, so I made sure the clean clothes I'm working on went upstairs for a little while so they didn't get any flying dog fur, any shaking wet dogs. So, and the bottle I used to mix my shampoo, it is an old Tupperware Rubbermaid bottle and it's um, a 32 ounce bottle. And it has measurements on the side. So if I need to be a little more exact in something I'm mixing, it's nice because I can measure it with that. Some people use empty gallon containers from like shampoo. I guess you could use a clean gallon milk jug if you wanted to mix up your stuff. But um, that's what I have found works for me. And you know, your whatever shampoos you want to try, you know, I've just found for me, it's more cost effective. It's a little more expensive up front, but I just buy, I, love you. I just buy the gallon size jugs of shampoo and um, conditioner. And I have a pump that I bought and it makes it really easy, you know, to do this now. I've had dogs a long time, so if you're just learning how to do these things, um, don't feel like you have to go out and buy all this stuff all at one time, you don't. I mean, there's ways that you just kind of manage with what you have. Um, this one little comb I have, I used to have Shih Tzus. This comb is from when I had Shih Tzus. <laughs> so, legs getting in about done. I just wanted to give him a rest from having been standing all that time. I didn't want him to keep standing. It's kind of hurt on him. And he's still recovering from what our new normal is with his heart condition. So I didn't want to stress him out and cause a problem with that. Now, I'm working on his tail and Tails are combed just like anything else. Um, and they get shampooed and conditioned just like anything else. I did notice he had a scabby area on here. I'm just going to kind of look at it. So, but um, a lot of this is good. Um, I just 
had a lot of friends and you know people that I'd met on Instagram or even my friends on Facebook and Ashley who has Logan Square Bears when they first got cast they had come out one time and they've never I don't think they've ever groomed you know given cats a bath so I said come on down help me watch whatever so I figured you know it's one of the only ways you're going to learn I didn't really have anybody that showed me except for the grooming place I used to go and I would take one of my first moves and I would groom her there and they just kind of gave me some pointers and then you know the thing about their fur is it is a renewable resource it will grow back and may look funny if you think of boots, but you know, it's not to bother them. It might not make you feel real good, but I've got this back end kind of done. I've got to move to the other side of that tail. I'm gonna see if I can get can I can you move it over? See if I can get up here in the front. Until I need for him to stand up. I doubt I'll be able to get him to roll over so I can do the other side. Some dogs love to lay on the grooming table. Castle loves to lay on his grooming table. He thinks it's like the best thing ever. He and I just does it because I ask him to. So this is not necessarily being on his grooming table is not necessarily his most fun thing. Although he likes the attention, he would just assume lay on the floor with me. And get combed, wouldn't you? I'm such a precious boy. Now, remember, my boys do a lot of therapy dog work. So, one of the reasons they get at least combed, if not bathed, a little more frequently is nobody likes to, to hug or pet a smelly, ucky dog. So, if you're going to be doing any kind of therapy dog work, then you need to kind of learn how to, at the very least, keep them combed. They do make a dry shampoo, and I do know people that use it, but I haven't had great success with it. So, you know, I thought about using that on Castle when after he, he and I had gotten sick and I hadn't had time to bathe him and I just decided Actually, a lot of times dogs smell because their dead undercoat needs to be combed out. And once you get that dead undercoat out, a lot of the odor goes away. It doesn't mean they're still not going to be dirty and still not going to need a bath, but they're not going to smell quite so funky. And um, so, yeah. So. I'm going to turn the, the filming off for a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do some trimming on Kinani. So you can kind of see how I do this. So it's personal preference. Kind of whatever makes you feel the most comfortable with your dog. Remember, it's a renewable resource and it does grow back. So I like to keep down here by their ankles trimmed. So I have curved scissors and I'm going to just stand. take my curved scissors and I go around the edge of his foot to kind of even that up. And 
And then they're supposed to look like cat paws. So once you get to the point where you might have some of this stuff, maybe if we get it in there. And then I try and get whatever up between the toes. And I use my thin shears and I kind of now thinning, shear, thinning shears are going to blend more so you're not going to just see a hard line and then sometimes I'll take that and kind of clean this up where I did the straight line because for my dogs with it being snowy and whatever outside that's what kind of works for us I'm gonna do his back but same way kind of carefully go around and we circle around his foot and then I'm not all about having all of this back here. So I also take my thinning shears and I thin some of this out because when it's snowy and muddy, he just ends up bringing a lot of that in and as long as it doesn't look like he's some kind of goof with a funny looking haircut that's good so then i had a friend ask me how i trim their chest and i don't trim their chest all the time but as these guys get a little older and their coat fills in This is where I should have my green or stuff. Then I take my thinning shears and I just kind of start working my way down. Stop. I know you're getting tired of it. Hey, 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 hey. And you just want to kind of follow the line of their chest. Stop. Now, these aren't show dogs. They're not going in the confirmation ring. Stop. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. You just kind of practice. You kind of get your dog working the way you like. Do take some of that. And then the other place on the dogs. Let's see how he pushes. And sometimes these guys start looking like they own their necks. They have so much loop up here. And he's not all the way dry, but I didn't, it's kind of getting stressful for him. So a lot of times you can take your thinning shears and you start kind of working at making sure right back here that you can tell they've got a neck. So we do that and then the ears, I'm kind of hurrying it up on Kenai when I do castle. I'll do it a little bit more. So Take their hair, normally it's dry. Remember, you can get it all dry on Kenai. You know, buddy, you're tired. So, you take it down like that, and you want to follow the line of their ear flap. And you just kind of, Kenai, head up. And blend it back into where So, kind of gives you an idea. Um, again, 
I'm not a professional videographer. I'm not a professional groomer. I've just had nukes a long time. So this is what it is for right now. Um, if you have questions, I guess let me know. And I'm going to do another one of Castle probably tomorrow. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.